Hey guys, Raw Motivations here. Wanted to come and talk to you a little bit about rage and a little bit how that looks from a narcissist perspective and like what's kind of happening, kind of break it down a little bit, like what's kind of happening there in the narcissistic aspect, okay? If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Ben Taylor. I run Raw Motivations. I'm a self aware narcissist on this platform, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, to be able to try to build awareness about what narcissism is. A lot of times when people think of narcissists, they think of the the person who's obsessed with themselves and who's like taking selfies like all the time. Like they don't really think of all the different things that make up narcissism. Even with talking to psychologists or therapists, doing one-on-ones with different people that have had the training, that have the knowledge, one of the popular things that they say is, we've been taught this, but it does not look like this in real life. Like the textbook narcissism, it makes sense when you're looking at in real life, but it doesn't make sense to catch it in a relationship because it's so manipulative, it's so crazy, it's so confusing, the cognitive dissonance is off the charts, it makes a person think this is a regular great relationship when in fact it's not. And the lying and the future faking and the gaslighting all pop up to be something that's completely false, a huge facade. And so we're on this channel to provide that awareness of, hey, this is what it is. This is what it looks like. Here's the attributes. Here's the traits. Here's the narcissistic quirks, like all these different videos that we've done that try to help people understand, hey, there's different red flags to catch, but you have to be looking for them and you have to be knowledgeable about what it is. A lot of times when people get to the place that they're starting to become aware and they're starting to learn about narcissism, it's almost like they're like drinking from a fire hose. It's like, whoa, like let me like read everything, watch everything, understand everything because there's so much to it. And the more people know, the more they're able to set themselves free from that relationship or the possibility of being with another person in another toxic relationship because they're educating themselves. Sometimes when people educate themselves, they get to a place where they start to blame and get upset at themselves. They're like, man, I'm so dumb because I did this. I'm so dumb because this happened to me. Like, how could I put up with that? How could I be with this person? I would never ask, you know, I would never tell my girlfriends to be with this person. I would never tell my guys to stay with that girl. Like all this type of stuff that runs through people's heads that makes them feel like an idiot. Let me ask you something. When you were four years old, were you able to do high functioning math or like algebra? No? Well, do you look back at when you were four years old and be like, man, I was so stupid at four years old because I didn't understand how to do algebra? No. That'd be foolish because you didn't have the knowledge, the maturity, the education to be able to effectively do it. But the thing is, people oftentimes look at the past and they judge themselves based on knowledge they have in the present. When it comes down to it, that's not fair. That's not right. And you need to pause and you need to give yourself some grace and understand, hey, there's more to this than meets the eye. I didn't understand this. I didn't know this back then, but I do now. How are you going to change and grow with what you know now today? What's going to be the next step for you to grow on a day-to-day basis? We try to partner with people to help that healing, growth, and change on a day-to-day basis. Whether you meet with me on Zoom calls, on -on one-on-ones, we'd love to be able to talk and interact with you. There's links down below you can click. Whether it's something where you interact on live events on Wednesday or Thursday nights or you interact on the NARC app, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community, NARC. You can find it in Google Google Store and um, Apple as well. Just be able to download that, be able to get in with a group of community. Uh, By the time we're recording this, there's over 3,000 people that have logged into the app that are starting to engage with tracking their no contact, with recording their truth, with engaging with giving advice and like helping support other people inside the app that are there to join the weekly secured lives inside the app so they can come on screen, talk about stuff, and it doesn't get broadcasted to the world, or they can get onto the monthly Zoom calls that are here to coach and help people grow. There's so many different resources we're trying to produce and try to be able to help for people that are out there so that you don't get back with someone that does this shit or that you get away from that person who's already abused you. Oftentimes, one of the signature moves, one of the signature ways that narcissists abuse is the aspect of rage. And with narcissists, it comes different. 
right? Like it's not the same as when a normal person would get angry. A normal person, you know, has like stages, has like levels of like, you know, they might have like low level frustration and irritation and then it slowly breeds into anger and then it might get to, you know, where it's actual rage. But it, it goes in like steps and progressions. With a narcissist, that's not the case. It's like all of a sudden it's from zero to a hundred. It's from, you know, peaceful to blow up. It's from this tiniest thing to this loudest roar. And a lot of times people get confused about this, but they also start walking on eggshells because they're like, what is going to set off this person? What is going to make them go from zero to 100 and all of a sudden explode at me and yell at me and have these outbursts? A lot of times that anger for the narcissist is directly underneath the surface. And it's not like a normal person where it has to like ramp up. It's like, here's rage and it's like right underneath. But oftentimes it's contained by a mask. It's contained by what they don't want people to see. They don't want people to see the anger inside or the shame that comes from the anger or the guilt that comes from the anger or the guilt that comes from the past times of anger. A lot of times there's stuff buried deep down inside, but not that rage. It's like right underneath the surface. The hard thing is when narcissists rage out, they don't apologize for it, right? Like they don't actually come out and say like, I'm sorry that I did that. It's very rare. And typically a sorry or a faux apology ends up being something that's just a tool to manipulate you to stay or a tool to manipulate something out of it. But typically when they don't apologize, all they do is they end up blaming the other person. You know, they put the blame on someone else of it's your fault. Like you made me do it. Like I wouldn't be this angry if it wasn't for you. They'll shame the other person of saying like how awful the other person is or they'll just project their anger onto them and be like, I wasn't angry, that was you. Like you were the one yelling at me. All different types of things like that to be able to confuse and distort the reality. They always turn out to be the victim. It's always justified. And the thing in the narcissist's mind is like my anger always has to be justified because in my mind I have to be perfect. Then there's no way for me to be able to accept that I'm not. And so I'm going to do everything I can to justify it, even if that means screaming and yelling at you. Then I have to switch it in my mind of saying, it was okay, like they deserved it. It was okay, like this happened. I'm always justifying it, like in my mind. The thing that you have to remember with narcissistic rage is it's not personal. Even though they're going to be yelling and screaming at you and saying that it's all your fault, that it's all because of you, it's not. And a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people don't understand that a lot of it is just underneath the surface with the narcissist. When it comes down to it, they're very hypersensitive, hypervigilant on like small snubs and like humiliations and like different things that attack their ego, that attack their worth, that attack who they are. And as a result, they rage out in anger because that's the easiest emotion to be able to tap into than all the other ones that they don't really have in a plethora of knowledge on. Or they don't have the maturity through those emotions to be able to deal with them or pull them out or identify them. So it's like, hey, let's just rage. It's a lot easier than everything else. Like I said, many things will trigger that. But then oftentimes on the flip side, it develops hypervigilance in everybody else around them and avoidance. Like that walking on eggshells, like trying to be careful that they don't get yelled at, that nothing explodes in their direction. And oftentimes that makes it really hard for you to be able to break that, to be able to get away. When we're talking about physical or emotional violence, it's hard to unlearn those habits, to unlearn those thought processes of the hypervigilance, of the avoidance, and then ultimately not to blame. I think one of the things that's one of the hardest for victims of narcissistic abuse, of the narcissistic abuse of rage that comes out, is to not blame themselves. Because you hear the narcissist in your head years later that's still telling you it's your fault. Like, I would not be screaming at you if you had listened the first time. Like, I would not be yelling at you if you hadn't found that out. I wouldn't be doing this if you... And they're always trying to switch it around. Or they'll try to say, like, you made me do it. Like, I didn't do this. I didn't want this. You made me. But they always had a choice. They always have a choice to take responsibility for their actions, but the problem is they don't. I mentioned before that narcissists want great power, but no responsibility. They want that power and that control over another person, but they don't want to have to take responsibility for it. But you are not to blame. I think a lot of people need to hear that. 
And you're not to blame for how they react, how they act, how they attack, how they rage. And oftentimes after the relationship, or as the relationship is winding down, you start to think like, did I cause that? Was it my fault? Was Were they just doing reactive abuse because of things that I did or things that I came into the relationship? Like, yeah, I yelled. Yeah, I got upset. All those things. But was that my fault of why they treated me that way? In the end of the day, no. They made the choice every single time. I want you to think of this statement. The narcissist's problems are not your fault and are not your responsibility. I think if there's anything you could leave from this video today, understanding and knowing and internalizing, maybe write this down, put it someplace so that you start thinking of it, you start living in the reality of what this actually is because when it comes down to it, their problems are not something that you caused. They're problems that they chose. They're problems that they did. And ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not your responsibility to change them, to fix them, to make them better, to love them to a certain degree so they, they, they get better, anything like that. I want you to hear this loud and clear. Take this away from me today. Write it down. Apply it into your lives. The narcissist problems are not your fault. The narcissist problems are not your responsibility. <laughs>